So for uh, for the sake of also the replay um, and the people who were coming in later, uh, good afternoon, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the last session with regards to skills and training of the Virtual GSC Conference 23. And I said it before during the start of the sessions, but this is the, this is the most easiest one because I have some uh, great speakers for you today, uh, Henry, Herb, and Leonardo, and uh, they will talk uh, to you about the Advent Code uh, Challenge. And with that, I would like to give the floor to you guys. Thank you so much, Joris. Hello, everyone. Uh, Advent of Code Goes Mainframe. Uh, th this was a this was a project started a couple of years ago, and we're so excited to kind of bring it together with uh, with some some stories and a, and a special guest. Uh, our ghost at the feast actually is um, GBT, that that famous uh, AI generator of everything. And I'm going to jump to the first slide here. Perhaps you want to say something about this, uh, uh, Henry. Um, yeah, well, as usually, we were um, running quite timely with our sessions, but um, then you need the cool abstracts for the um, for the conference. So we we asked Advent of or um, Chat GPT to create one for us, um, and this is the actual screenshot from the chat session with Chat GPT. Um, I must say, Herb and me had a lot of fun having our little chat session with the robot. Um, and it came up with a pretty decent abstract for our session, um, which I'm not going to read out loud, but you can you can see it on the screen. Um, but, we but didn't we thought it was all that great. Um, mm. So I, I think the next slide, I'm, I'm asking ChatGPT to make it a bit more teasing to get more people in, which kind of worked. Um, and, and then this is also the actual abstract you see at the, um, at the conference website. So it's it's pretty amazing to see how how well how ChatGPT could could bring that all together, refer back to previous questions. Um, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, well, get ready to be amazed, as it says in the uh, as it says in the abstract here. <laughs> so, Advent of Code, what's that all about? Why is it so popular? Uh, maybe maybe you want to say a bit here, um, uh, Henry, because I remember it was you who first brought it to my attention because it, it's quite a cult thing among developers, right? It, it probably is. I don't know. It's 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 a like a yearly competition running from 2015, I think, was the first year yeah. that it, it aired. Um, it's not our puzzle, right? It's a uh, Eric Watzel is, is the guy who's, who's creating all the puzzles. I think he spends half the year creating it. He's doing a very, very awesome job. Um, and it's basically just a set of 25 days, you know, in the advent to Christmas um, to solve some easy to troublesome to head breaking puzzles um, for fame, for glory, for fun. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a really amazing competition. Um, and a couple of years ago, I think about maybe four years ago, three, four years ago, I started thinking, well, wait a minute, I could do these puzzles in, in mainframe things. I could, I don't need to do Python on the Linux box. I can do it in Rex. I can try some PL1. So that kind of got me started with the mainframe leaderboard, which this year is what it is. And it's, we're constantly growing. More people are joining very happy to have Leonardo here as one of the um, contestants, I would say, um, Lum on, the, luminaries. On, on the mainframe leaderboard. Um, and it's basically just having fun with code and fighting your fight with technology for, for fun and learning uh, a learning curve. So, oh, yeah. I'm going to swap that. So this is what it actually looks like. This, this is like a full kind of 25 day uh, arrangement and basically those stars if you get two stars it means that you've solved both puzzles and they build up kind of day by day into like a kind of a I was going to say an ASCII art kind of graphic but you know Eptic also also available um, so, so as you as you solve them it rewards you with a, a kind of a new line of, uh, of, of, of text picture and eventually by the time you get to the 25th day you've kind of built up a whole a whole kind of um, a, a celebratory kind of a Christmassy themed um, 
uh, pick. So I think we've said all those things that we need to say there. Uh, so, I mean, we, we like it because uh, there was some, some fun involved. We saw the potential for uh, creating some discussions around languages, between languages, and it's something that the worldwide uh, kind of programming community is uh, involved in. Uh, could I ask uh, quickly, Leonardo, how did you hear about what we were doing? How did that come to your attention? Well, from Henry. I think from his uh, Twitter. Right. Yeah. So, so it, it's kind of, um, I mean, it, it goes all over uh, kind of social media at certain times of year. Uh, so we kind of gathered people together. Maybe you want to say something about this here, Henry? Yeah. One of the, the, this, the fringe effects of this advent of code is everybody is doing stuff around it, right? Uh, we are running our mainframe board. There's people running, I don't know, um, the BBC Micro Basic leaderboards. Um, it, it's all kind of crazy, crazy developer stuff. There is this guy, and I think he's Dutch, Dutching by the name, um, who runs the unofficial Advent of Code survey that he sends out every year with a, a humongous questionnaire um, of, you know, what language are you programming in? Why are you doing it? Uh, and then it has some pre filled answers. Um, last year, the, one of the pre-filled answers wasn't COBOL, and I think this year it was. Um, oh. and, and then he just collects all that data and pushes out on that, um, on that URL there the results of, you know, of the survey, hence the survey says. Um, you kind of get a gist of what the, um, you know, the most popular languages were last year. That's the left one. So, you know, nearly half the people write in Python and then it goes down and somewhere in the other column are the languages um, Leonardo, me and all the other mainframe leaderboard people done it in. Um, so yeah, it, it would be really cool to have, you know, a year at some stage where there would be an actual column for, you know, COBOL or high level assembly, Leonardo. Um, <laughs> it, it collects which interface are people using, which IDE, um, of course, the ISPF editor isn't among those on the, you know, major scores, but it just gives you a gist of um, um, of how broad and wide this is being being played with. Mm -hmm. I Jump think there's the one more one. that shows um, why are people doing it. Um, I think it's very fitting. I, I, I can't otherwise but agree with this. Uh, it's for fun. It's for a challenge. Definitely to improve your skills in a fun way. Um, for Stanta is obviously a very good reason to, um, but, but it's a nice way to, to either, you know, up your skills in an existing programming language or just try a new one from scratch. Um, so, yeah, and then there's the URL for the full results as a big JSON file. And I think there's two or three entries that say, what operating system are you using? And I think there's two entries that say ZOS. So it's, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at one of the challenges because uh, I'm not sure everybody on the call has, has seen this themselves, but hopefully we can kind of talk you, talk you through this. Uh, so this was day one of uh, 2015, which is the first year it ran. Uh, do you wanna do you wanna say something about that one, Henry? Yeah, we could. Um, the whole advent of code every year is, you know, besides the cool puzzles, it it is really a story, right? And of course, it, you can you know wink at the story, and there's some nice little fun things in between the lines as well. But it, and to boil it down, there's always this problem you know, with Santa or the elves or the presents being lost and day by day by day, you you help Santa deliver his presents to everybody. That's, that's basically the, the general story template. Um, first every year, first every day, um, Santa needs to deliver the, the presents in an apartment building. He needs to have a map of where he needs to go. The map is made out of opening and closing parentheses and your you know, your puzzle is then to find out what floor he needs to deliver the, the presents to. Now, the entire way 
advent of code is is laid out you get the textual puzzle then if you would press one more time herb Indeed. Uh, you get a little example of what your actual puzzle input is going to look like so you can already you know start start thinking about solving this in whatever language you pick obviously um, and it also gives you all the results right so this is kind of like your test set that you can can use to to you know check if your program's running and then eventually you get the uh, you know the, the assignment what floor do the instructions take center to and well in the examples they're obviously quite quite uh, quite simple to solve because it's you know the first one is go up go up go down go down that must be floor zero um, and then uh, you get your own puzzle input and you get this um yeah i don't th i think people have read it by now so you can press it yeah. once more <laughs> um right so 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 that's what you get um my experience i'm curious if leonardo had the same there were some puzzles where based on the example puzzle set, your program works just fine. And then you take the real data and you've missed out on edge cases, uh, uh, thinking about performance because it runs. But I mean, I cook dinner, do the dishes, do the laundry and the code's still not finished. So it's, it's, yeah. it's really, really cool. And I mean, this is a very easy, simple starter puzzle. But again, you, you might get amazed by... Um, by the, the actual puzzle data you get. Yeah, no, exactly. And with assembler, like sometimes you even forget to get main enough storage to get the whole thing. Because <laughs> it fits <laughs> on the example, but it doesn't fit on, yeah. <laughs> on the real data. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we've found some, some, some solutions to that day, just so we have a little, little feeling of how people solve that day. Um, Right, and I don't even know what language. It's probably Python, I think. That looks like Python to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, you've got a for loop, and you're you're counting the opens, and you're counting the closes, and at the end, you you print the number, basically. Yeah. So that's that's a that's a straightforward one. Uh, however, we have an example here, and I'm looking at that, and that is that is COBOL, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so same code, slightly more involved, and you can see more of the cunning things about, you know, opening the files and, and some of the, some of the things that you have to do to kind of, kind of get it working. And those, those, those two bits of code are kind of equivalent. You can see, you know, kind of how one kind of matches with the other. If you particularly, if you kind of start from the bottom up, it, it's kind of a, an interesting kind of view there. And then, uh, go again. How's about that then? Yeah, that is uh, that. Obviously, Rex. It says so at the start. Um, and again, same, same logic, same algorithm, different language. Um, yeah, one of the things you know, the message we need to get across. It, it's a very good. I like your metaphor for this herb. It's a big Rosetta Stone of computer languages. Because if you can read the one and understand, I don't know, COBOL. And you're thinking about, well, I wonder how Rex works. You, you can kind of, you know, have a translation going on to, to compare those those different languages that that give the same result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's a, it's a great it's a great resource for for kind of thinking about coding and thinking about coding in different languages, and it's all for Santa. <laughs> oh, why did I do that? So, um, yeah, th th this is th this is the take. Um, for the for the the mainframe leaderboard uh you have to solve them in mainframe languages that's kind of the the, the basis on which you're in which you're playing and our, our thinking was uh so it provides a level playing field for us to to kind of solve problems on whatever platform whatever whatever language uh because it is a global thing for the development community it gives people who aren't necessarily mainframers an opportunity to try out some some mainframe for a for a go and see uh, see see what it's see what it's really like to, to engage with the community and I think one of the things we all know is that uh, mainframers are actually quite a quite a great community in terms of like you know sharing and, and conversations and and stuff like that so it, it basically kind of opens us up uh, a, a bit. And uh, we also think there are so many people out there who have incredible 
skills in mainframe languages. You may have seen we did some posts on LinkedIn about, you know, so, you know, what is it you can't do with your language? And you know, everyone said, oh, my language can do anything. And so we go, oh, yeah, prove it then. Go on, have a go at, uh, at advent of code. And it just just really uh, a little a little bit of an event where uh, where we can kind of get some of those some of those skills on show. Um, some of the background to this, uh, there's a friend of ours called uh, Portia Tung, who runs something called the School of Play. Recommend having a, a, a look at that. And we met at a software conference um, probably around the time the first advent of code was uh, was, was happening. Yeah, that, that, that'll go. And it was... Um, it was really interesting experience because she was encouraging uh, people in the software industry to try and be more playful. So we often think of the platform as being, you know, very much it's a business thing, it's a serious thing. And actually, um, if you if you if you find the playful aspect of things, then you can you can do them for longer. You kind of de-risk them, and ultimately you kind of improve the the learning value by by kind of making a bit of a a bit of a game of it. Um, so, so they have these four principles of, of something that that's playful. So first being everyone's invited. So you know we we, we make it open to anyone who'd like to. To take part um you know there's not like a big feel that they, all the requirement is that you're having to go in mainframe languages but aside of that now you know we're very keen to kind of meet new people and, and kind of um open a door to new new talent it's completely optional it's not an obligation uh because you know kind of ma making people play that's that's kind of torture uh <laughs> you to to, to so some people really enjoy it more by, by getting, you know, right into it and kind of chasing after the points. Uh, others, they'll, they'll do some and then they'll lapse and then they'll come back in again. And, and um, that that's all good. Taking part is really kind of up to you. Um, it gives an opportunity to, to talk about. We have common experiences and I think later we'll see some of the chats that we had on, on, on Reddit and things that people said. And it has the potential to change the way we think about what we're doing and so that that was kind of one of the philosophical things that we kind of um kind of inspired us to kind of do that um i, I often make this analogy when i talk to students about you know kind of learning programming uh if you think about how you learn to skateboard uh there's no manual uh there's, there's no training programs it tends to involve falling off a lot and and uh you know kind of trying to trying to deal with the deal with the bruises <laughs> but because you're having fun you keep doing it uh you know kind of fun is a great anesthetic and and we're trying to weaponize that to kind of um uh, help us uh, help us get more uh kind of uh, conversations around the uh, platform And of course, uh, in our aim in doing this was partly to try and change the way that people think about uh, mainframes uh, and mainframe languages. There are a lot of kind of myths that go around about, you know, oh yeah, you can't, you can't do that. Um, you know, oh, the reason that this doesn't happen is because it's on a mainframe. And actually, uh, there are talented people that could show you pretty much anything <laughs> In pretty much any any language, as, as Leonardo will attest, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, what he got into uh, uh, in a in a minute. Um, again, that thing about the Rosetta Stone, um, we thought it would be a great way to help us compare languages and to learn about new languages. Because if you've got the same solution in multiple languages and you can compare them, then it helps you get inside how these other languages work, what, what the philosophy is, uh, you know, kind of equivalent kind of keywords and, and structures and, uh, and things like that. It also helps you learn different tricks within languages. So, uh, you know, sometimes uh, there, are, there are kind of particular techniques that uh, you, you um, you don't know, but you see someone else use them, and based on the context, you you kind of understand what's going on, and and kind of uh, we're all about kind of stimulating that um, uh, that that response. So, of course, when you're trying to attract mainframers, 
where would you put your messages to try and get them to come out? Well, obviously, on Reddit, right? You all read Reddit all the time, don't you? Yeah, it's a classic mainframer platform, no? <laughs> No, not so much, <laughs> but we'd like it to be. We need more mainframers on, on Reddit. There's a lot of conversations there uh, in, the, uh, in the development community. And in many ways, you know, we, it's nice to have us there too. That way we can contribute and learn and, and all that good stuff. Uh, in case nobody was catching the Reddit, I, I ended up spamming it to um, uh, LinkedIn because there's a lot of good and active groups out there. Perhaps some of you who came along saw, saw a post I put about that. And some of it was, you know, we, we started with a bit of a tease. I actually went down to the British Museum because they had like a show on the Rosetta Stone. And that is, I was going to say that is the actual stone. It turns out that is an actual copy of the actual stone. And they've got a big uh, display in, uh, in, in the British Museum at the moment. And it was really just kind of teasing people to, to say like, you know, okay, what's your favorite languages and what problems can and can't you solve with it? And this kind of led them to our sign up uh, for, for the leaderboard. Um, and uh, and, we, uh, and we, we, we started kind of um, uh, encouraging people from, from there. Uh, I also put something on uh, the Facebook site because you know, uh, if, if you don't catch them on Reddit, you'll probably catch them on, on Facebook. And it was very much the same thing. And I actually got a huge number of responses. A lot of people talking about the, the ins and outs of, uh, you know, their, their, their language and, uh, you know, what people were, what people were saying, uh, you know, just, just bringing back pleasant memories of their favorite languages and, and the things that they were able to do. And, um, for us, it was really about kind of driving that conversation and using that energy to kind of get that, get, get that kind of group of people solving problems, dynamics happening, conversations and, and, and all that good stuff. And that's, that's something that we, we feel kind of went quite, uh, went quite well. Uh, so perhaps, Henry, you want to talk us through the leaderboard? Um, yeah, well, of course, everything is blacked out because we're not spoiling the beans just quite yet. Um, but, you know, once you, you join Advent of Code, um, you can join, you can create your own leaderboard and join as many as you like. Uh, one of those is the mainframe leaderboard. Um, you get, you know, everybody joins, it gets a spot on that list of numbers that's been bricked out there. Um, the plan we had for this year, because we're growing, we're having humongously good support from companies like Microfocus and Interskill. Um, thanks again. And you'll get more thanks later too. Open text. Uh, right, so, okay. Yeah, which is now open text, correct. Um, but the, the basic thing is you sign up, you receive your logon code through, you know, signing up. Because last year we've noticed if you take your secret leaderboard code and plaster it all over Twitter, you get a thing which is a thing in Advent of Code world, which I call leaderboard squatting. People go, oh, a leaderboard code, I'll join there. And, and, you know, they have this, which is, of course, play and fun as well, at least I think so, and I hope so, to be number one on as many boards as possible. I mean, that can be a driving force too. Um, it kind of spoiled our leaderboard yacht last year. So for this year, we've closed it down, made a sign-up form, and you will receive the code through email to have a bit more control. Um, and then, of course, you know, thanks to uh, the two companies um, who've provided some cool swag, we, we get to, you know, reward people for their efforts and their, their I mean, reward them for having fun. I, it still sounds like a bad business model, but still, right? It, <laughs> yeah. that was the gist of it. Yeah, yeah. We, we decided to sweeten the pop. Right? It wasn't just, just the fun. We said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, let, let, let's, 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 make a, let's make a thing of it. So on the Reddit, I think the links are plastered all through our, our slides, so you can read them at your leisure later. But um, um, there's all sorts of fringe benefits going on, right? People will start writing nice blog posts. Nearly everybody puts out their code on GitHub. Um, for me, as a you know IT nerdy guy, I'd love looking at other people's solutions. Yes, sometimes even before I've had my own. Like, oh, that's how you do it, and. Mm -hmm. Um, is that cheating? Mm, I don't think so. It's it's definitely learning. 
true. Let me. So it's a little interaction All here. Uh, today. And here's just a bit of the of the well the discussion and the talk that's going on there. Uh, people go, oh, I'm going to do it in Rex, and oh, I can't get part two solved for day five. And um, again, like Herb was saying, that I think that's one of the cool things Advent of Code brings us. You can, as a you know mainframe coder, whether you're doing Rex, PL1, COBOL, assembly, you can talk about you know day 12 where the only viable solution is a recursive function. You can talk about that problem with someone who's just writing Java. And it, you you have a common ground, and they're like, "You're doing this on a mainframe? What?" And it, yeah, I think it's a really cool cool side effect. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think I think it, it's it's interesting to note the conversations bring out talent. I mean, I, I think in a way, uh, you know, we, we're discovering as many uh, kind of uh, new mainframes as, as as we're as, as as anything else. So I mean, last uh, last year's winner, Galois girl. Uh, an incredible coder and uh, you know she's now kind of part of our community and we we, we talk and stuff Leonardo um, you know how would we have run into you if it wasn't for if it wasn't for this I mean you know do you come to GSC yeah it's in the no, back I don't, yeah I don't uh, no I've never uh, participated in GSC before been a Europe thing I guess uh, time uh, <laughs> and everything <laughs> But uh, exactly. it's, yeah, no, I can say, uh, like, whatever uh, Henry said uh, so far, like, it's for fun, it's for, for learning. Uh, I, I noticed uh, Henry posting and I said, oh, yeah, no, but let's let's give this a try. This is, this, this sounds like fun. A good challenge. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so discovering mainframers worldwide. And there's some other crazy things. So... Uh, some of the languages used on the leaderboard this year. I think we are familiar with pretty much all of those ones. Am I right? Were there any others? I don't think so. PL1, I think, right? There was uh, some people saying PL1. Yeah, yep. there was some PL1 too. Yes, very good, Leonardo. Yeah. Uh, ne next year, who who knows? Because we, we, we find every year it gets a little bit bigger because people kind of share the story and, and it attracts more people in. I was seeing in some of the comments a lot of people talking about APL, a lot of people talking about uh, Fortran, and you go, well, okay, bring your game, bring your game, see 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 what you can you can do with it. Maybe we'll see some more of those um, next time. Okay, so what did it look like this year? Uh, I don't know if you want to talk through this one, uh, Henry. Uh, shall we delve into it? Yeah, 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 this is so the, the first, I think you did this one in assembly as well. I think Leonardo, yeah, day one, the first yes. bit. Um, it, it always again, starts easy, right? Yeah, so yeah. yeah but it, 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 it starts one. easy. Um, <laughs> that's the way they pull you in, right? Um, but it's this story about the elves who need enough snacks and candy to make it through wherever they need to be going. Um, and you get this list of each amount of calories every elf has with him in his, probably his knapsack or his backpack, um, divided by empty lines. And then, um, you know, the first part of your puzzle is which elf has the most calories. So at least all the elves know if they get hungry, you know, they have to go to that guy. Um, so you get a little example input again. You get, you know, the, the explained solution. Um, and then the first part says, well, which elf has the most calories? And then you have that done and your code works and it didn't break. And then you get part two, which is sometimes just something extra. And sometimes I think Eric, the guy who creates the puzzle, explicitly makes day two questions or part two questions that way to, to make you think, oh, I've missed something. I've cut some corners. I should have made a function for this. I should have made this more generic. Um, so then in part two here this year, you need to, I'm kind of lost. I have to read these small letters, but you need to find the top three elves with the most calories and give them your total sum. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was, that was that one. it wasn't difficult from, from an understanding perspective. Uh, some puzzles, especially when you get beat, you know, the closer you get to day 2021, 
sometimes, at least for me, it was quite hard to actually grasp the puzzle, to, to just know what do I need to do here. Um, this one is, of course, getting you in the, in the right spirit. And I think on the next slide, Herb, we have a couple of our leaderboard solutions for that. Yeah, I, I was going to say part, part twos are often like a, a kind of an object lesson in refactoring, taught with a baseball bat. Sometimes, yes. Um, of course, these are too small to discuss line by line, but um, from left to right, uh, a cobalt solution. I think the middle one is yours, Leonardo. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, over yeah. zooming. Yeah, you can see that now. Yeah. So which one are we going to look at first? We're going to look down the... So the, the, we've got the, the cobalt here on the left. So you see what they're doing? Uh, they're, they're going through the, the lines of the file and they're kind of summing up the calories as they go. And there's some, some classic kind of COBOL stuff in there. We're seeing our definitions, uh, you know, all sorts of things that you forget about, you know, kind of how, how, it, how it works. So, uh, so the final bit at the end of that, a check for our, uh, our ultimate elf over here in the middle, sir. Of course, the full code oh, wouldn't no. fit on the slide, Leonardo. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. yeah, if I knew the code would be here, I'd make it neater, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's more real. <laughs> you know, that, that's how, like, you, you, can, you can see how you were thinking and go, all oh, right, no, I'll fix that, or, you know, nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing too tidy. It was it's very, very... Yeah, a lot, uh, of, lot of back and forth, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah from, from, the, from the fountainhead kind of thing. And, and, and you can see there, you, you know, j just the things you're doing there as you're, as you're doing the, 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 the cumulative sum, you go, oh, okay, right, yeah, 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 you, you forget, you know, yeah, make your own loops and yeah, no, it's, it's uh, some grand stuff. And then on the other end, uh, we, have a, we have some wrecks here, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a uh, 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 lovely, lovely example here of how you're doing that same thing in a, in a slightly different uh, uh, kind of way. So, uh, and, and you see some of the, the Rex uh, string handling uh, come into its own, uh, to call string handling is something you can only dream of in um, high level assembler, but, uh, <laughs> but there you go. And we contrast that with the, with the Java and all of these were solutions that were given to us by, um, uh, people participating on the on the leaderboard. Um, uh, we we did mention our ghost at the feast, and and this was just a thing like last minute. We thought, oh, this is so much fun. Let's throw this. Let's throw this in. Let, let's let let's co-create here. Oops. Chat GPT can also play uh, Advent of Code. Uh, maybe, maybe you want to say what you did here, Henry. Yeah, well, well, basically, we gave Advent of Code the, the, the important bits of the puzzle, a straight copy paste from, from the Advent of Code website, including the, you know, the test data. And just to see if, you know, ChatGPT could, could solve that for us without coding a single letter. I mean, that would be proof of ChatGPT getting us all out of a job, right? Um, we said, well, ChatGPT, can you solve that for me? And ChatGPT goes, without a doubt, split second. Yeah, sure. That's uh, the elf with items four, five, and six thousand, and that's seventeen thousand in total. Mm. Mm. The initial easy reader goes, "Oh, that's damn fast." It is wrong on so many levels, right? For one, four thousand and five thousand and six thousand, at least on my calculator. Maybe it's a euro thing. Is fifteen thousand, not seventeen, um, and definitely it's it's far less than seven thousand plus eight thousand plus nine thousand. So so one of the fair warnings we're given here is um, don't put all your trust in in uh, Chat GPT and blindlessly copy what it tells you, especially if it's code. <laughs> That's just the warning here. I'll get the next one now. Oops. 
Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah, but uh, j j yeah, just 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 to finish that off, it was just it was interesting to see it would give you an answer, and it was quite confident about it. But in a way, you had to, you, you definitely have to check it. You, you know, it's, it's an interesting part of the the conversation. Partly because I have heard these things said that how people are going to, you know, kind of um, manage now that we don't have as many experienced mainframers as we used to, or now we're trying to build the base, is, oh, we'll use AI, AI will build it. And it's like, well, but you have to watch that. It does some cool stuff, but, you know, beware. Okay. Do you, do you, do you want to get through this one, Henry? Because I think these are particularly your learnings. Yeah, well, this is just, you know, sharing out some of the the community stuff you, you get going on because you know hashtag advent of code at least on the twitter sphere is is hyping in december um and it was at least in that first puzzle as well i saw it in in the code on the previous slide i had to sort items in a stem now if you're doing python you say you know sorted list done you don't need to think about anything it works in, in rex you can't sort a stem so and then you figure it out. You're like, oh, this is going to go in my bag of tricks because I'm going to need this for for real stuff. Um, again, GPT is not a great help either. Um, again, this is just me pasting in stuff from, you know, partially my program's output, partially the puzzle. Um, and you can see uh, this was that monkey business puzzle. It was a humongously weird one. Um, so I'm asking him, you know, the question and he goes, yeah, 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 you do this, that and the other. And then I reply, well, thanks. I'll code it myself then. Unless you can write the Rex program. Um, and then chat GPT wasn't much of a, of a big help. Um, so that was my learning curve for, for chat GPT last December. Um, and just the whole, um, you know, the whole support you get from the community. Um, I had troubles with recursive functions in Rex, and then you post that on Twitter with a bit of code or a you know a little video of what's going on, and you've got the most different kinds of people replying, going, "Oh, have you thought of this? Have you thought of that?" I, I think it's a really, it, it's a really cool learning curve. Just I was going to say, do we? I think we have a clip of that somewhere, don't we? Hang on, let me let me just unzoom that and maybe slip. Oh, can you see that? Oh, yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, just... so this is the whole, whole communication going, right? What's happening? My control stack is exploding. I'm only five nested levels deep. Uh, the book says I can use 250. What's going on? And then, well, yeah, you get you get funny replies. You get tangible replies. Uh, it, it's, it's just really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, this is the best one, right? It says make the necessary corrections in the exec, because that's 100% what the IBM manual says on that error <laughs> code. <laughs> Right. And it's, it's so helpful. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> and and you, you can see it's, you, you know, you, you're, you're exploring the platform. You, by trying these things out, you're, you're learning more about the platform. You're seeing things that you didn't see before. Kind of thing. Well, what, is, is that Martin Packer? I'm sure I recognize that hat. Yeah, yeah, that's Martin indeed. Um, yeah, it was really cool. Indeed. Yeah, so so we were getting in some uh, we were getting into some useful voices, kind of suggesting why things might not be uh, all they all they wanted. So uh, it was a competition. Uh, we 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 did it that way to to encourage and reward uh, the brave. Um, before we get into uh, some of that, and I know some of our uh, our sponsors are in the uh, are in the audience. Uh, we want to say a huge thank you to um, those who have helped us. Uh, Open Text, Knee Micro Focus, and Interskill Learning. Uh, thank you so much for being people that, that enable uh, the, the, these conversations in the in the community. It, it really just came about that we we thought, okay, let's have a leaderboard, and then we go. Actually, maybe there are people who have a, a dog in the fight here with, you know, kind of learning and, and um, languages uh, who'd be willing to support the people that, uh, you know, kind of put themselves put themselves out there. And um, so we, um, we we reached out to um, uh, some people we know and uh, and they and they 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 
very, very graciously decided to, to help us out. Uh, we thought we would um, thank them through the medium of um, ChatGPT, our co-author here. And um, as I say, uh, ChatGPT is very polite, if nothing else there. So I, I hope you uh, hope you, uh, hope you appreciate uh, the, the, the sentiment and it is totally all true. <laughs> That's, uh, right. that's interesting. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> please, please, I, I, I was done, yeah. I was doing the inter interview courses on Assembler, and that's why I got the idea of doing the advent of code in Assembler. So <laughs> quite interesting that comes full circle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, and that, was, that was really what we were, what we were hoping would, would, would happen, that people that would kind of do things would be a bit inspired, and people just having the challenge would kind of go, right, I should do this in, you know, a language I haven't tried before. Oh, and there's some resources. Let me let me dive in here and, and, and make those happen. So our role of honor, uh, maybe maybe you want to say something at this point, um, uh, Henry. I don't know. I don't know who that fellow at the top of the board is. Um, oh. we, we could ignore him, I think. Yeah, yeah, that one skip. We skip the first and the last, or that will be sad for Glowy. So, uh, no, there was. I think we had about forty odd people sign up to the leaderboard. I remember um, fifty, or fifty, fifty. Yeah, but there was a couple of those last year squatters there, mind you. Yeah. Um, these are. Um, I've stopped the copy of the screen um, right up to the point where there is no more points. So there was people joining who thought, well, let's give this a go and never did something. That is fine too. There's a lot of other interesting stuff to do um, leading up to Christmas. Um, but these are the people who actually scored one or more stars. Um, and then, um, so those are the ones that we've you know, pre-selected for the, for the role of honor that Interskill has so graciously um, provided some, some Interskill t-shirts for. Um, and rest assured, if you recognize your name on this list, you'll get an email from either Herb or me to, you know, get some snail mail details um, so we can, you know, get that that swag delivered to you. Um, so yeah, yeah you'll, that's, uh, you'll, you'll see in the bottom there. You have our seal of approval. So well done. Thank thanks very much for 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 taking part. Good job, people. Good job. Okay. So, um, champion supporters of the COBOL language, uh, the, the open text company who were, who were previously microfocus. So, all of those with a yellow star uh, get themselves a COBOL completers pack. So, those, those top five scorers that completed in, in COBOL. Uh, did was there something to add on that one, Henry? Well, I don't want to spoil the surprises too much, but um, mm -hmm. rest assured, I am very sad on organizing this, finishing first in the leaderboard and not doing Kobo because the price packages MicroFocus slash OpenText have provided are off the charts. So um, the people with the yellow stars behind their, their name or tag, be prepared for something like really amazing and mind you due to the you know merger acquisition of microfocus and open text this is the last microfocus swag ever right there, there will be no more um, mm. so mm. It's, it's double and and it's really amazing stuff i'm uh, quite jealous to say the least truly truly precious uh we also had so so we have the everyone award we have the cobol award um we, we we also instituted uh we call the diving suit award um there, there was a there was a guy uh, a couple of years ago who ran the london marathon uh dressed in an antique diving suit complete with lead boots and it took him about a week uh we were so impressed with the work that people did submitting in in high level assembler <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that we thought we'd we create a special prize, and uh, Microfocus have uh, have agreed to um, 
to uh, to to recognise those those individuals. Um, our, our, our trusty co-creator, uh, ChatGBT, came up with the following. Participants who solve the puzzles in assembly are true masters of the mainframe, their ability to work with low level code and apply their knowledge of assembly to the advent of code competition showcases their exceptional skills and dedication to the field. Their solutions demonstrate the versatility and power of the mainframe and we are in awe of their mastery and creativity. Not bad for an AI. Would you like to say a little something at this point, Leonardo? This is what we're really I, glad. I, I really like the analogy there. I think it's very accurate with <laughs> the diving suit. <laughs> it's like doing a run on a diving suit. Yeah, it's uh, but it's like was, like we said in the oh. beginning, right? It's for the fun, it's for the challenge, it's for the learning. So it was well worth it. I plan to do it again next year. Uh, I mean, what what do, do doing that? What what did it tell you about assembly? What what what, what languages do you code in mostly at the moment? It's uh, well, very little assembly. It's, it's some Rex, but mm -hmm. I don't do most. I don't do a lot of coding. It's mostly yeah. system support. So, yeah. Uh, I, sometimes I do a little bit of assembly when I have to change an exit, but it's like uh, no, it's most of the time. Uh, I don't touch assembly. But... Well, uh, uh, but but you touched it quite a bit for this one. Um, I mean, it's interesting that for you sure, say you know sure. at the moment you know it's, it's kind of mostly support, but clearly you've kind of demonstrated that you have the chops if you wanted to take it somewhere else. You know, I, I think in, in many ways it's kind of like a test of courage, if nothing else. You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's not a language. <laughs> So uh, I mean that that was that that's really most of what we we, we wanted to say. Um, uh, we're, we're we're grateful for you coming along, and uh, I think we had a we had a great time. Um, uh, I think our, our takeaways, and I, I think I promised some of you awesome sauce. There it is at the end. Um, it, it can be serious fun, so both serious and fun. Uh, we hope it raises the profile of the mainframe community to people who are into languages and development, but who otherwise mightn't kind of get involved. And uh, we hope it starts these conversations with some of the people that we're trying to bring in and some of the people who, who have the experience. There's a whole conversation, and I think you've probably seen that this, this notion about mainframe modernization is a bit of a theme at the moment. Uh, Henry and I have been, you know, kind of working on some ideas about what we think modernization is. And a lot of it is actually around people learning new things and trying new things out and, and kind of new attitudes to, to tech and, and how we make it work. And we hope that kind of making this happen um, kind of contributes to, to that journey that the, the, the platform is, uh, is, is currently on. Um, some some great adventurous uh, stuff we got involved in, as uh, as Leonardo will uh, will attest. Uh, we thank our sponsors uh, very much. And um, if if you are representing a company, if you are interested in um, uh, supporting our, our efforts in 2023, do reach out. We would be um, more than more than happy to uh, to talk to you about that. Uh, we're going to leave the last word to our, our co-creator. Now, we didn't rush these slides at all. I, I may just read that out. So thank you to all our amazing participants for making this year's Advent of Code competition a huge success. Your enthusiasm and creativity have been truly inspiring. We hope that you had as much fun as we did, and we invite you to join us again next year for even more excellent uh, ex excitement and challenges. A special thank you to Microfocus, now Open Text, and Interskill Training for their generous sponsorship and support. Your contributions have greatly added to success of this event. We would also like to extend a warm welcome to any additional sponsors who would like to join us in the future. We look forward to seeing you all again next year for another thrilling edition of the Advent of Code competition. Thank you for being part of this incredible journey and for helping to make the community even stronger. See you in the next competition. I thank you so much. Have we questions? 
Hopefully no assembler questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one of the questions on that one I heard was why? <laughs> because it was there. A great um, question. I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because is the answer. I'm just going to see if we got anything in the chat. Uh, and I can't. It's hard to see. Any? No. Well, I see Giles are saying very cool. Thank you very much. Well, thank you again as well, Giles. I can have you on mute if you want to say a few. Maybe being one of our generous yeah. sponsors. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's yeah, thanks, guys. I mean, uh, that wasn't me, no, me either, yeah. right? Um, sorry, yeah, maybe I'll end the so, slideshow. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really interesting to hear about that. I mean, I've chatted many times on the phone to you about all this, but I've never sort of like seen it as uh, as you've shown it to everybody here. So, no, it's really interesting, it's great stuff. I mean, you, you guys make the mainframe look cool, you know, which is, uh, which is, uh, you know, sometimes it's been been hard to do, but uh, no, thank you for all your, all the stuff that you do. And to Leonardo as well for his, uh, for, for, for bringing everything to the table. It's just uh, great to deal with you as always. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, so now we hope I next year. Oh, sorry. I, I was going to say, so we, we hope next time we can, um, you know, in, encourage, uh, you know, you widen the community even further and uh, and see what comes out. Because I think, um, I remember when Henry and I were originally talking about it, uh, we thought, well, look, this may not be one talk. There, there are like particular things that you find out on different challenges that yeah. could be like, you know, years worth of talks just, just because of the things that you discover about the platform, about the language. Uh, about you know kind of the bugs that you find and what they tell you about what's yeah. going on behind the scenes so uh so you know may the deserts bloom yeah absolutely cool well let's wrap it up thank you all very much for your attention again big thanks to our sponsors big thanks to all our participants and um stay tuned for next year's competition i would say can't wait thank Thanks. you very good thank cool. you very much Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.